Heavenly Father, we thank you. Because you are Lord. You are King. The governor among the nations. We say thank you. For all you said yesterday, we say thank you. For all you did yesterday, we say thank you. For the testimonies that will follow it, we say thank you. Lord, we are asking that today you would improve on all you have started. Let the seals be taken off. Indeed, let this be Peniel for us. We vow to give you the glory in advance for what you are going to do. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Is somebody celebrating the King of Kings? There is such a sweet ambience of God's presence in this house. You know, when Mama was talking, there was just such a sweet aroma. If you know God, you know, you can sense him. It's just a sweet presence of God in the house. And I'm convinced that tonight is your night. And that tonight will be a night of revelation and impartation for you in Jesus' name. While you're standing a little bit, I want you to celebrate my spiritual parents. Papa and Mama Eboda. Is that how you're going to celebrate? Daddy, Mommy, thank you for raising me up. Thank you for nurturing me. Thank you for instructing, for directing, for shaping me. You continue to do so even as we age. And I thank you, sir, for being parents we can be proud of, parents we can look up to, parents that we can boast about wherever we go. And I speak on behalf of every one of us who are members of the Harvest House Nation. Your investment in us will not be in vain, sir. Your investment in us will not be in vain, man. In Jesus' precious name. Are you celebrating my parents this day? Oh, you can do better. Please have your seat in God's wonderful presence. Dad, I may just steal this choir to Lagos. Let's celebrate the Harvest House Choir. The anointed. God bless you. Thank you so much for being prolific and for being excellent at what you do. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Are you expecting tonight? Yes. Amen. You know, it's, I'm just a foreigner of greater things to come. Hallelujah. This seven days, this, uh, seven days will be epochal. There will be days you are not likely to recover from in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I want you to understand that the water level will get deeper as the days go by. It means you have to hang around for everything, amen, because the waters will get deeper as the days go by. And I pray that everything God has ordained for this season, you will go home with it in Jesus' mighty name. I have a brief assignment today, amen. Yesterday was about laying foundations, and, and today we're going to build upon it, amen. We're going to build upon it. And, uh, in preparation for this meeting, I've been studying uh, and been listening to the messages uh, of my spiritual dad along the lines of newness, experiencing the new and things like that. Uh, today, I happen to be studying the, the message he preached at HCC Canada, um, at the movie World Canada. And in, in that place, he defined newness uh, in four ways. And I just want to probably begin with that as we walk briefly this evening. He said in that message, newness is when God decides to introduce himself afresh to you. And if I can pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, that's exactly what God will do. God will show you a side of himself you have never seen before. He also said newness is having a progressive revelation, a progressive revelation of God. And I'm praying that these seven days, your revelation of God will progress in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
Thirdly, he said, newness is when God decides to close a chapter of your life. Hallelujah. When God decides to close a chapter. And lastly, he said, newness is when God decides that it is time. And I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, these four definitions of newness will find manifestation in your life, in your experience, in Jesus' mighty name. Turn with me briefly to Romans chapter 16 and verse 25. Romans 16 and verse 25. Romans 16 verse 25, I'll read it to verse 27. It says, Now unto him who is able, let's, let's read it together, to establish you. Are you there? According to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began but is now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations are we together according to the commandment of the everlasting God for the obedience to the faith to God alone Oh, God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forevermore. And somebody says, Amen. Amen. My second uh, text uh, for this evening will be found in Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 to verse 9. It says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, and this is your prophecy once more, it, it is a little while I will shake heaven and I will shake the earth, I will shake the sea, I will shake the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory. Somebody says, Amen. Amen. Says the Lord of hosts. Then, in case you think the glory is smoke, he says, The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory, which is the silver or gold of this latter temple, shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace. Is somebody saying amen? amen? I want to add a little layer, hallelujah, to what we started yesterday as great giants of God show up in the coming days to take it to the next level. I want to speak briefly on how to enter realms of financial renewal how to enter realms of financial renewal how to enter realms of financial renewal father tonight i ask that your light will shine unhindered and unchecked by any outside force in the name of the lord jesus I'm asking, oh God, that utterance will be given to me. Entrance will be given to your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everyone will leave this place with a grasp of what it takes to birth the new in their financial lives. In the name of Jesus, let burdens be lifted. Let yokes be destroyed. Let lives be transformed. Let there be a shift. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we vow to give you all the glory. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody says amen. amen. I want to begin by saying to you that there are realms of existence. Though we are human beings, we all live on the earth, but we're not all living in the same realm of existence. There are realms. The realm you live in will determine to a large extent the kind of manifestations that you command. The realm you are in will determine the kind of manifestations you command. This may not be exhaustive, but probably the first realm is what I call the realm of opinions. The realm of opinions. 
I think, I feel, it is that realm. And I want to say to you, many are living on that realm. One of the things that social media has done in the last few years, it has given voice to the revival of human opinions. Amen. Opinion. I think it's like this. I think it's all right. I think. And many live on that realm. I want to say to you that if men even call themselves opinion something. What do press men call it? Opinion. Huh? Opinion leaders. <laughs> I laugh in mockery. <laughs> you know. Because if that's your realm, you will hit a brick wall that you can never pass. Opinion. And that's not the best. The, the, the danger, number two, is the second realm is what I call the realm of information. Now, this is a bit better than living in the realm of opinions. In this realm, it's not just you ventilating what you think or feel about issues, but at this realm, probably the aggregation of facts has led you to come to a point of conclusion regarding what you may be pushing. And it's fairly better. But that is really not the ultimate for a child of God. The realm that God wants every son and daughter of God to live is what I call the realm of revelation. Please follow me. The realm of revelation. Now, if you pick two believers, the believer who is living in the realm of revelation and the believer who is living in the realm of opinions cannot have the same results. As a matter of fact, it is dangerous for you to have formed your opinion before arriving at the point of your revelation. If you're going to do great things in the kingdom and for God, you would have to allow God's revelation inform your opinion. If your opinions are stronger than God's revelation, then God cannot do much with you or through you. Unfortunately, many believers are there as we speak. And my advice to you is please are you running your life just on human opinion? Or are you running it based on human information? Or are you running it based on divine revelation? What God wants you to do, ladies and gentlemen, the ultimate for a believer is to run their lives by divine revelation. Why? Because this is exactly how Jesus did it. In John chapter 5, verse 30, I read, it says, I can of my own self do nothing. Jesus speaking. As I hear, I judge. And, and my judgment is right because I don't seek my own will or I'm not running based on my own opinion. That is, Jesus had to suspend his opinions to fulfill what God had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Jesus if Jesus was saying here that I can of my own self do nothing and that I, as I hear I judge and my judgment is righteous because I don't seek my own will, he must tell you that your own personal opinion, if Jesus had to suspend his opinion to adopt the will of the Father who sent him, your opinion can hold you back. Can hold you back. Of course, you see this again where he was talking about John 5, 19, when he said, Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. Here you are seeing a man who is not running. Jesus is saying, I'm not running my life based on my opinion. In Isaiah 11, where we saw the scriptures, uh, you know, Isaiah 11, where we spoke about the sevenfold spirit of God, 
the influence of the sevenfold spirit of God in verse 3 to verse 4 says, His delight will be in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears, not by social media, not by what he sees in the natural. He said, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor. He will decide with equity for the meek of the earth and he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. We are seeing therefore that Jesus is saying one sign of a spiritual person is that they don't judge things from a natural point of view. Henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Hallelujah. So again you are seeing here if Jesus Christ was saying I'm not running my life by opinion and i'm not running my life by re information i'm running my life by revelation as i hear and as i see from god i i i judge and the reason why my judgment is accurate because i'm not after my own will but the will of the father who has sent me having said that therefore revelation revelation living by revelation is the best prescription is the best way for a believer to live their life not by information not by opinion but revelation and i dare say you are matured to the degree to which you allow god's revelation influence your opinion form your opinion on a subject on marriage on finance on business i love deuteronomy 29 29 because it says the the, the hidden things hallelujah belong to the lord hallelujah it's about the things that are revealed belong to us and, and to our children that we may do all the words of the lord now i like the way the message translation puts it the message translation says something like the revealed things are our business can i see that please the revealed things are our business so every believer is not supposed to be in the opinion business or the information business you are supposed to be in the revelation business it should be that when i look at your marriage you are trading revelation for your marriage to work you're trading revelation for your business to work you're trading revelation for your ministry. revelation revelation he says the revealed things which god will take care of the hidden things he said but the revealed things are our business then he says it is up to us and our children to attend to the terms of this revelation. So revelations have terms. Are we together tonight? Please, I'm building. I'm building. Don't worry. I'll soon shout. <laughs> I'll soon shout. Amen. So having said that, this is not different. Your finances also. If you are running your finances by opinion, I can tell you, you will not get there. If you are running by information, I can tell you, you won't get there. The people that God will honor with the new realm of finance that I'm seeing are going to be people operating their financials by revelation. By revelation. Now, having said that, in Romans 16 verse 25, we now see something. It says, God is of power to establish you. Now, look at people say, God can establish you. Oh, you're not, I'm not feeling you here. Say, God can establish you. <laughs> Tell somebody, say, God can establish you. That's what I say, God can establish. God can establish your marriage, establish your business, establish. God can. God is an establisher. Let the beauty of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. God can establish you. Now, he now said, God is of power to establish you according. Notice. He didn't just say, God will establish you, full stop. Or God will establish you, exclamation mark. He said, no. God is of power to establish you according. According. Now, the according is the key issue. Because he's not just saying, I can do it. I can do it. But it's according to something else. Now, so if I desire the establishment, I need to go and find out what it is according. Are you get what is according for instance, Ephesians 3.20 says, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all you can think, or imagine, according. Very sad. According there suggests that you have a part to play. 
according there says that God has limited what he can do or will do to something else. He's limited it to something else. So if I now want the establishment of God to explode my faith, I have to go and find out what he has limited that establishment to so that I can satisfy that condition so that God can move. Am I making sense? So let's see what he's limited his establishment to. He says, God is able to establish you. Paul now said, according to my gospel, not according to the gospel, I don't, according to my gospel. So here he's telling you about streams of establishment, streams of spiritual establishment, streams of financial establishment, streams of establishment. And he says there are three streams. The first stream is that God is able to establish you according to my gospel, not according to the gospel, because the next point, he spoke about the gospel. Now, when he's talking about my gospel there, he's saying the first stream of your establishment is the gospel of your own particular apostle. <laughs> mm. Help me, Lord. Your own. God is able to establish you according to my. He took ownership of that gospel. Suggesting that this particular apostle has his own gospel which is a subset of the larger gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, when you zone into my gospel, the power of establishment will begin to show up. I'm about to share with you the secret of my success, the secret of my wealth. When the Lord showed me this several years ago, the Lord told me, that means I, I can establish you, but the power to establish you is according to the gospel of my apostle. My, my own apostle. Now, the word there, apostle has become a very fancy word. I don't like it anymore. Anybody that has a phone that can make noise on somebody's an apostle is the reigning title. I don't want to be associated with the title. Just the function is enough. His function is enough. When he says my apostle, it means that he was saying your establishment is in the hand of your own, your own apostle. Your own. The word there means apostolos, one sent forth. Now, everybody has their own. In the harvest house nation, our own apostle is the Reverend Gwemini Abola. Now, as you zone into his own gospel, God will establish you. <laughs> you see, God will not use the thing you are thinking to do the thing you are thinking. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you very plainly the secret of this short man's success is mastery of my own apostle's gospel. It is why no matter where I am in the world, there is nothing my pastor, my own saint one, preaches that I will not listen to. I have notes here called the school. It's called the school of a Buddha. No, no, no. It's not like funny like that. Though. It's like I would have caused someone to come and check it. The school of a brother, 2023. Everything he preaches carries with it the stream of God's establishment for me. So I'm the pastor of a church, but I'm a member of the Harvest House Nation. The apostle sent to the Harvest House Nation is the Reverend Gwemi, brother. Now, to the degree to which I master his gospel, the stream of establishment will begin to operate. It's like I told you, God will not use what you're thinking to do what you're thinking. When you sit the people generating results down, I guarantee you, it will be something over your, it will be something you just feel, what is that? What is that? Just listen to your pastor? Of course. Let me try and break it down. I'm going somewhere with this, I'm going somewhere. Do you know that in 2 Chronicles, Chronicles 26, verse 3 to verse 5, we're talking prosperity and wealth. 26, 5. He says, Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. 
He reigned for 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Jecoliah from Jerusalem. He behaved well in the eyes of God. Following the footsteps of Father Amaziah, he was a loyal seeker of God. Now, I want you to underline that. And he was well trained, the message translation, well trained by his pastor and teacher to live in reverent obedience before God. And as long as Zachariah lived, hey, Uzziah lived a godly life and God prospered him. <laughs> Let me tell you a secret. See, um, you know, I'm not a guest minister. I'm your brother from another, you know, your brother. Take everything our apostle says seriously. I dare you to listen to everything he says for the next one year. Don't bother how the prosperity will happen, businessman. Don't bother how the prosperity. See, God will not use what you are thinking to what you are thinking. God will not honor your intellect. You will not honor your, you will not honor your degree. He's going to honor your submission to his ways. So he says he was well trained. And as long as Zachariah lived, he prospered. Hey, Dad, when I got a hold of this scripture, yeah, 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 yeah. My God, my God, you link my prosperity to listening to my my own. Ah, Dad, but Muboni, yeah, There is nothing he says. One day he was he was not in church. He was not in church. I had followed him for two years, listening to everything. One Sunday that I was not judged, I quickly said, Dad, you were not in church this Sunday. He said, this guy is following my destiny. <laughs> it's not that I'm, it's because I, f I found out that God releases the power for your establishment as you master the peculiar gospel of the apostle. Now, let me share some things. Now, I, I don't have time to go to Numbers 27, verse 16 to verse 17, that a church has only one pastor. And that every church has an angel. You may not like that. The Lord set a man over the congregation. And then everybody else are under. Are you getting one? I'm not saying that there's only one part. But I'm saying there's one set man. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. And as, as you master the gospel of that sent one. Let me tell you some tragedy I noticed happened during COVID. During COVID, we stopped going to church. Really. And then we started going online to feed. <clears throat> so we began to go online. And before we finish one, another one will play. And that thing will play. And then we began to find ourselves during COVID listening to voices unintentionally. And somewhere we now began to feel that the revelation of those that are not sent to us is more valid than the revelation of those that God has sent to us. And many people lost it. Let me ask you a question. Let me, let me tell you what social media is. It is driven by algorithms. Is it an algorithm that would tell me who to listen to? You, are you telling me that Zuckerberg knows who I should be listening to? So for me, no social media algorithm suggests to me who to listen to. Because there are people not trending to hear. Especially if they are the ones sent to you. What the time is what the younger generation listens to is who is trending? They've lost their roots. Confused. I, I want somebody, Mr. Joseph Sane, please come. Mr. Femi, please come. Dad, I want to just do I want the permission for them to step on this pulpit. And I want to show you something. You know, what happened during COVID? You're going to stay far. <laughs> You're going to stay close. Right? What happened during COVID is through social media algorithms, they began to suggest to us who is trending, who should listen to, who did, 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 did. and gradually we began to value people that were afar more than people that were near. No, not knowing that. All you can tell about somebody speaking on social media is their social media language. 
We are now beginning to forsake men who have lived with us for years. Men who have run their families. Men that we are sure of how they love their wives. Men that, are you getting one of them? And there's one thing, there's one thing, there's this thing. There's one, what is wrong with us? God sets the solitary in families, families have it. Come here. No, no, watch this. Watch this. If God has something for you, uh, you know, this guy is close to me. This guy is far from me. I, I have something from God. Sir, don't paint. <laughs> it is easier for someone closer to you to give. There's somebody making noise on social media you don't know. <laughs> Forgive me for me. So, establishment comes from the mastery of the gospel of your own apostle. Our own apostle in the Harvest House Nation. See, 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 I'm not, see, I'm not a theoretical victor. This is, I'm talking about approving things, you know. Things where I don't prove. <laughs> are, no, 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 no. I, I am I'm not. My mindset is too pragmatic to, I, to take nonsense. I have proven it, sir. The more I have mastered the gospel of our apostle, the more the power to be established has been unleashed. Now, let me add some things here to it. You see, one of the problems of not listening to your own apostle is that you will lack his spirit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there are many things in life that only the spirit of your saint one can move. But how will you carry... I mean, I even hear there are associate pastors now that listen more to other people than their set man. Error! I will take of the spirit that is upon you and I'll place it upon them and then they will be able to bear the burden so you can't use another person's spirit to bear the burden of your saint one but you now can't carry that spirit if you don't listen to him because he spake unto me spirit entered me and some things see Jesus was going, he left his spirit. Elijah was going, he left his spirit. It's see, let me. Ah, Holy Spirit. I hope I'm explaining this. <laughs> it is so simple. We use the spirit of men to do the things we do. And the spirit of the man God has given to us is Papa Ibada. So we listen to him religiously, preeminently. And consistently enough to carry his spirit such that when we now show up in places the spirit that we have listened to moves things yeah. imagine for instance now Elisha was saying I, I want to pack the Jordan I want to pack it how, how long will you pack the Jordan but when they saw that the spirit of Elijah <laughs> I see a lot of people that they are trying to pack it Things that the spirit of your set man should make happen for you. Move for you. Clear the road for you. You know, people they're struggling, especially people closest to them. Out of familiarity. Familiarity. I refuse to be familiar. I refuse to be familiar. I refuse. So, so, so that's the first thing. So the first two is you must master the gospel of your apostle. You must master it. What I found out has happened over the now, there is constipation of application. People wake up every day now. He has heard this one. He's joined this prayer meeting. He's got lost. <laughs> you even see somebody from a church, Harvest House, will be rolling the prayer of another church. She'll be like, for my Lori. Daddy, you correct me later. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's like some guy who drives Mercedes Benz, who is working for Mercedes Benz, posting Toyota. Error, man. We're not saying God is not using our We're not saying that. But we're just saying that this is our own. You know that they will not join Monday morning prayers with Rev. And there was someone that said, hey, hey, oh, hey, hey. That's why your prayers don't be answered. <laughs> you, you didn't pray, praise <laughs> Oh my God. Daddy, you will correct me later, but I have already entered here. <laughs> because
because you don't know divine order. Your inheritance is your tribe. So, 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 I just got carried away with that. Forgive me. But this thing is jackpot. I'm telling you, this thing, listening to our man on one of us is jackpot. I'm telling you the truth. It's jackpot. You'll be amazed at the establishment. And it will be on first redeems of establishment. It's not what, what Matthew 11 makes it called on first redeem of grace. It's not you trying to do anything. You're, you're just watching it happen like this as you are listening. I wish people knew eh, that Mary's portion was better. That Mary's portion. Mary has chosen the good part. I wish people understood how important the mastery of the gospel of their own set apostle is. Say to me, no man of God is more important to me than my man of God. No man of God. Why this thing is very important? Because you have to have defined it because it will be tested. This week, for instance, this week, I'm supposed to be somewhere in Ikrodu with a patriarch who is organizing a, a conference, something like that, a conference or something like that, yeah. or maybe a crusade. I had given him my word. <laughs> Um, we are we going to be there. We will be there. Yes, sir. We will be there. I'm um, having ministers' conference. We'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> then after that, my own apostle now said, "You are here. You are here. You are here." <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> it's not that. Uh, you, you, why those things are important? You have to. You should have resolved deep before there is a conflict of interest. It's defined. so that anything there are things primary, there are things secondary, there are things tertiary. Oh God, oh, before now. There are now people now, they are trying to please tertiary things over primary. You go follow. Trying to please primary. Instantly, when I looked at it, somebody close to me now said to me, he said, eh, I want us to go together for that particular program. That knows what I'm talking about. He said, I want you to join me to go for that program. I didn't have to think it twice. I said, this whole week, for the seven days, I'm a Papa Buddha. So, you have to have defined who your set apostle is so that when there's a conflict of interest, you, 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 no, 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 no. Not that anything. It's not anything. So you know what I did? I sent cars. Car, protocol, police. Take them there. I can't be there. It's not anything. What will I say now that I won't be here? I demand. What, what am I building? What am I doing? Don't you know sometimes absence at meetings like this suggests that you are running some important thing that lacks results? So called important thing. What? So, so you are here in Ibadan now. You are not around for this conference. Dad, I'm sorry for talking like this, you know, to your people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what can be more important than an appointment? Our set apostle says. Too much noise. Number two. He now says the second stream of establishment comes from the preaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not motivation. <laughs> Not information. The preaching. Many people don't want to preach him, yet they want to see him. If you don't preach him, you won't see him. Romans 1, 26, 16 rather. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Not the gospel. Gospel. Like Billy. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord. It is the power of God unto salvation. It's not psychology. Not motivation. Not those kind of things. The gospel is the power. And there's a shame that comes with preaching it. Yet when you preach it, the power will show up. So it says the second thing. I mean, I still come to the idea I'm going for mental counseling. There are some life coach thing. Wait, what's life? Who life coached you? You are not obeying scripture. You are looking for peace. Where do you put scriptures like my mind? I'll keep it in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you? Let me say, Satan's always looking for shortcuts. It's, it's, it's not your way. It's not your way. If you obey God, you'll be fine. Anything that circumvents the obedience of the believer has destroyed his spiritual life. So we preach him to see him. We preach him to see him. If I had time to say this, because I'm now beginning to run. <laughs> if I had time to say this, I'll tell you that he's our elder brother. We are his younger brother. 
Now, as his younger brother, when the elder brother died, you study Genesis, all these kind of things. It is the responsibility of the younger brother to raise up seed. That's why I will preach Jesus forever. Because as his younger brother on earth, it is my responsibility to raise up seed unto his name through the preaching of the gospel. That's an altar call now forever. Now forever. Forever. And as he says, if I refuse to raise up seed to my younger brother, I will become, they will spit on my face. That's shame, shame. And then they says, he will now become the family of the one whose shoes are loosed. Now, how long, how far can you go with loose shoes? How far? That's what number two, soul winning is important. And he that reaps, receives wages. Go and study the richer churches in the world. They are soul winning churches. For he that reaps, receives wages and gathers fruit unto eternal life. We never, you see, our church is primarily a soul winning center. So when you begin to resonate with his own agenda, preaching the gospel, having souls attached to you, then God begins to pay. And God pays well. Yay! Come check my hand. He pays well. So the second stream of establishment, I'm going, I'm still building. Room. The second stream of establishment is the preaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say to a generation, Let's not abandon Jesus for motivation. Let's not abandon Jesus for psychology. Let's not abandon Jesus for noise. Let's not abandon Jesus for anything. You can remember? Let's not abandon. There are certain kind of results that only Jesus can give you. <laughs> only Jesus. Only Jesus. So the second stream of establishment is the preaching of Jesus Christ. The third stream of establishment, hallelujah, is... What he now calls the revelation of the mysteries. I'm still in Romans chapter 16. He says, this revelation of the mysteries were encoded in the prophetic scriptures. I'm, I'm about to land the plane. <laughs> he says, this revelation of the mysteries are encoded in the prophetic scriptures. According to the revelation of the mystery, kept secret since the world began, but it's now made manifest by the prophetic scripture made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for the obedience of... I'm still talking finance. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just talking finance. It's all corrected. Such that the establishment of these last days is encoded in the prophetic books. What God will do in these last days is he will begin to open the seals on the prophetic scriptures for us to see things he wants to do through us. And as we respond to him, you begin to see all kinds of stuff. My focus now, today, is this realm of financial renewal, there are some prophetic scriptures that releases what God wants to do in this season and in these last days. And I'm going to just hit it one after the other. And as I declare it, it is confirmed immediately. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. So you must pay attention to the... Because surely God will do nothing. Except Amos 3 verse 7. He reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophet. So there is therefore a connection between your financial realm and your financial revelation. Your financial realm is done by your financial revelations. Is realm... Revelation for him. Revelation for him. Great revelation. Great realm. Little revelation. Little realm. It's revelation for him. You cannot reach for a realm in manifestation that you have not yet gotten to in revelation. So the way God does the new, this is the order of God. When God wants to do the new, he ushers in the revelation for it. And then the dispensation of manifestation follows the revelation. That's the order of God. So when we're talking about newness, this season is going to be a season of unprecedented revelation. Financial revelations, spiritual revelations, might, uh, unprecedented. And on the back of that revelation will come strange manifestations that if you tell people, they will not believe. Can I mention like forums? And as I mention it, it becomes your portion. Amen. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? The first realm, write this down, is the realm 
of returned expenditure. The realm of returned expenditure. Genesis 43 and verse 22. Genesis 43 and verse 23. The realm. Let's work together. And we brought 43.23. It said, be at peace. Do not be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, has given you treasure on your sacks. I had your money. Then he brought Simeon out of them. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. They went to Egypt and they had a particular transaction. They paid for the transaction in Egypt. And when they paid for the transaction in Egypt, on their way back, the money they had spent came back into their account. Am I in the right church tonight? That is, there is a realm where... Let's see, I'm not... See, there's a realm where everything you sow comes back. But I'm here talking about a realm where everything you spend comes back. Can I prophesy over somebody here? Everything you spent in January, everything you spent in March, April, May, June, in the name of Jesus, I see returning to your coffers. Do you know this revelation hinders you from the fear of, the fear of spending? I'm not saying you should be wasteful. But we saw here, they spent the money in an Egyptian transaction. On their way back, they saw the money back. They now took the money and went to return it. Watch this. They went back to Egypt and said, Sir, we, we saw the money. He said, No. I have your money. That is, the money you paid me is with me. It was two things. The God, your God, and the God of your father that put money in your sack. Are you here? Yeah. That's why you, you, don't, you don't, don't be functioning only with your God. Though. You need both the God and the God of your father. So if you don't get, if you don't get father, not only have God, they work for you. Both the God and the God of your father has put money back in your sacks. I prophesy over you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everything spent after this conference is coming back. Where is that? Amen of faith. Everything you spent on your children is coming back. Everything you spent on your business is coming back. Everything you spent on ministry is coming back. My confidence in spending that is that everything will come back. Everything. The God of my father will bring it back. I don't, I don't spend timidly. I don't spend timidly. I don't spend timidly. I said, I'm not wasteful. Ask him. I only drink water. And I'm not wasteful. But when it comes to spending for the kingdom, no try me, man. God deserves the best. It's an expression of my worship for him. Malachi chapter 1, all the way down. Am I making sense here? Now, in case you say, oh, Pastor, I can, I can, I'm telling you that if I be a man of God, and if I be a son of this house, the God of my father, Papa Ibada, who has been refunding what I have spent on him, spent in the ministry, to my account, will refund it to your account. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In 2 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 9, the second witness is that the Namaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do about the hundred talents which I have given to the troops of Israel? And the man of God answered, Lord God is able to give you much more. Can I prophesy over you much more? Much more, much more, much more, much more, much more, much more, much more than you gave. Much more than you spent. Much more in the name of the Lord Jesus. So that's one realm. The realm of returned expenditure. The realm of, you know, I told you yesterday, you must believe the angels come in these seven days. Who is believing that? Let everything you have spent this year return to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's press on. There's a second realm because my time is moving. It's called the realm of limitless finances. HCSB. The realm of limitless finances. In Isaiah chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible said their land is full of silver and gold. There is no limit to their treasures. He said their land is full of horses. There is no limit to their chariots. Oh my God. Oh my God. Say no limit. No limit. No limit. No limit. No limit. No limit. Can I ask you a question? Imagine what you would do if money was not a limit. Imagine what you would do for God. What you do for your sweetheart. What you do for your children. Imagine the school that your children will go to. Imagine the venues you will use for God. Imagine the properties you buy. If there was no limit, he said their land is full of silver and gold. There's no limit to their treasure. Their land is full of horses. Sir. And there's no limit to their chariots. 
Let me declare over you. Every limit over your finances. Let it be taken off. <laughs> let it be taken off now. Every financial embargo. Let it be taken off now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So say limitless. Man. Limitless. Limitless. These are things God is going to do in the last days. Limitless. That one day, I went to see a particular bishop. You know who I'm talking about. So I, I wanted to sow into their church as I was leaving the place. It was on Thursday. So when I was there, I went there to go and sow. So when I got there, they, they, they took me to the bishop's office. I'd never been there before. Bishop, they not mention him. So I got bishop's office. And they said, the peer said, is this money, is it for the bishop or is it for the church? No, I said, it's my seed to the church. They said, oh, no, 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 no. Go downstairs. So I went downstairs to the finance office of that particular church. When I got there, the finance office was empty. I said, why? What is happening here? I said, is the finance office? Finance office. Where is everybody? This was Thursday. Where is everybody? About three, four years ago. He said, they are counting Sunday's offering. You didn't get what I said. They counted Sunday's offering on Monday. They didn't finish it. They counted it on Tuesday, they didn't finish it. They counted offering on Wednesday, they didn't finish it. On Thursday, when I got there, they were still counting. That's why they can be building what they are building. I speak over you. Every limit over your finances, let it be taken off. In the name of Jesus. This realm of ubiquitous and limitless finances was also emphasized in Job chapter 22, verse 21 to verse 26. He says, now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. Receive, please, instruction from his mouth and lay up his word in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, he said, you'll be built up. You will remove iniquity from your tabernacle. Hallelujah. He says, and then you will lay up gold as gold dust the gold of offer among the stones of the brooks he said yes the almighty will be your gold uh, and your precious silver and you will have your delight in the almighty he's talking about gold dust go now let me explain gold as dust if you close this auditorium clean out this entire auditorium mop it close the window close the door when you open it there will still be dust he's talking about a realm of unescapable finances you may not like what I'm trying to tell you, but some of us empty our account daily. And daily, like hair, it keeps growing. I declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let gold, 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 wealth, like dust. Wealth that cannot be escaped. Wealth that nothing you do, nothing you do can get rid of. Nothing you do can get rid of it in the name of the Lord Jesus. If I had time, I would have told you about financial authority. And financial prosperity, there's a difference between financial authority and financial prosperity. Financial prosperity is, uh, are they prosper? Financial authority is that money follows you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Ask Papa, I was still listening to that. I was in some of your testimonies. I was like, hey, God, when will I get there? $30,000. When will I get there? You, you, that is, there are people that everywhere they go, money follows them. Everywhere they go. Because they are in a realm of inescapable finance. Let it be your portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Number four, hallelujah, is the realm of the seizure. And I'm using my word intentionally. The realm of the seizure of the wealth of nations. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 13 to verse 15. I'm, I'm using my word in this seizure, seizure, seize, seize. He says, for I have done this by my own strength. The Assyrian was the king of Assyria. I'm clever. I abolished the borders of the nations. I plundered their treasure like a mighty warrior. I subjugated the inheritance. My hand has reached out as into a nest to seize the wealth of the nations. As one gathers abandoned eggs, I gathered the whole earth. No wing fluttered. No beak opened its mouth on its cheek. He now said, does an axe exalt itself above the one who chops with it. So there are going to be people in these last days that will be financial axes. God will use them as financial axes to seize the wealth of the nations. He said, does a soul magnify itself above the one who sows with it? There are going to be financial souls. It will be as a staff waving itself against the one who lifts it. And as a rod lifting a man who is in wood. Let me explain. Why this is very important? Why this is very important? is because the world will not just give you the wealth. We have to seize it. Tell you a brief story. About a few years ago, we were about to get a property in Lagos. 54 million naira. Sir, I went to the banks. Our bank, our bank, banked with 
since eternity. That's then I know that bankers are not living for your best interest. All of our transaction was with them. Everything was with them. They, they, they refused us. I said, okay. I said, there's a Christian bank. I won't mention the name. I said, let us go. The, the Christian bank. After all, a Christian bank will loan to a Christian church. <laughs> we, we got there. They said, bring this. Bring that. Bring your intestine. Bring your bum bum. Bring your nail. Bring this. Bring. It took us 31 days or 40 days to gather the documents. When we gather the documents for the loan, that I'm confessing. When we gather the documents, because I wanted to have results. When we gather the documents, I went to the bank. You know what the bank said? They said, there's still one. I said to the account, shut it down! <laughs> shut it down! Close the account! Click. I won't mention the name of the Christian bank. Christian bank. Then I said, God, is there no way for you to do this thing without them? And then I began to worry. Confession. I began to provoke the things, the oracles of the kingdom of God. Oh, my way to you one try. By the time we complete that building, we may have spent close to a billion. I'll be surprised if we have not. I'll be surprised if we have not. And when we close it, it will be absolutely debt free. I owe no man in the world, no man on heaven, on earth. You see, if we didn't seize the wealth through faith, when we are opening the church, the bankers will be there saying, We praise you. <laughs> And then I'll be using people's tithes and offering to Kanema Nema La Demano. There are provisions in the word of God for the seizure of the money to finance your business, for the seizure of the wealth. There are provisions. Then I found that there are provisions. I discovered that through my pure language, there can be the repatriation of wealth from the people. I began. All this thing, where pastor, they tell us, where we know they take seriously. Now, why would they struggle with the world? Are you there? I discovered this. Come it down. And today we are seizing it. We are seizing it daily. Tell you what, be a order. We have an assignment. Nothing will hinder us. But you seize, you seize it. You seize it with your faith. You seize it with your confession. You seize it with prayer. You seize it with fasting. Then people you have not spoken to, you just say, eh. We are let to give you 100 million. Eh? We just want to give you 70 million. Eh? What is remaining in that place? You didn't tell them all. It is the things you provoke. Boom, 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 boom. Blant on them. There's... Lastly, is the realm of billions. Haggai, chapter 2. I would have told you, you know, this realm of seizure, you see Psalm 68. Rebuild the company of spare men. The more to the bulls on the council, till they submit themselves with silver and gold. You see, my eyes and trash, oh daughter. I will make your horn. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. Micah 4, 30, 13. I will make your horn, make your hoofs brass. You will beat them to pieces and consecrate again unto the Lord, the Lord of all earth. Lastly, lastly, because I must, must keep the time. Must keep the time. It's the room of billions. Haggai 2, 6. It says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former house. Okay, what was the former house? This was Solomon's temple that David built with millions, if not billions of dollars. And the Bible is saying the glory of the latter day church, the latter day churches will be multi billion dollar institutions. The glory of the latter day church will be greater than glory. But then that's one realm, institutional. But there's an individual implication of this because you are also built up an habitation. Of, of God onto the spirit. So there will be billionaire individuals in last days. There will be billionaire institutions in last days. And it will be because God is moving. And I think my time is up. Rise up. <laughs> Rise up, please. <laughs> Let me use my 14 seconds. Listen to me. Listen to me. There are just two keys to it. Financial faithfulness and freedom from financial greed. God will not empower somebody he can't trust. So what determines your access to this thing is your trust profile. Your trust, you know they have AA rating, BB rating, this is that. It is your trust rating that determines your access frequency. Once you cannot be trusted, forget the thing. Nobody will give you the thing. Are you there? You're not going to invest in the company where you can't get back your investments. So you must grow in trust and in faith. And I think my time is up. Lift up your hands and worship Jesus. Worship him. Dad, can I? 
Just a minute to take the altar call. Lift up your hands and worship him. Worship him. Can I declare over you? Everything you have heard, you will experience. Yeah. On the back of this revelation, the Harvest House Nation is coming to the greatest dispensation of wealth it has ever seen. Billionaires will rise. Many of them in their 20s and in their 30s. They will accuse you that you are using something. But, <laughs> but you will know that it is just the God of your father, the preaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fulfillment of prophetic scriptures in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every heart, head bowed, every eye closed. Everything rises and falls on relationship. Everything rises and falls on relationship. You can't get the best of God without a fantastic relationship with him. God is not against what you have done wrong. He's died for that. He's died. He's not against your past. He's aware of that. Can you surprise God where you're coming from? What could you have done that can be stronger than the blood of Jesus? He says to we that God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing unto men their trespasses. So he doesn't want to impute everything. All he wants back is the relationship. As the relationship with the prodigal son was restored, things began to happen. Everything was waiting at home. The robe was waiting at home. The ring was waiting at home. The shoes were waiting at home. Everything was waiting at home. All he wanted is for the son to return. I want to pray for somebody who's saying, Pastor, can you pray for me? Upstairs, outside, inside, in the ante rooms, can you pray for me? I need to reconcile with my maker. Can you pray for me so that his best can be credited to my account? If that is you, humbly and gently lay your hands on your chest and say with me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Therefore, right now, I am saved. I return. Clothe me again with everything you have for me. Let your mercy prevail over my life. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that and you meant it in your heart, upstairs, outside, downstairs, wherever you are. Before I step down, I want to bless you for a minute. Come to where this man of God is. I want to bless you. You prayed it and you meant it. Church, celebrate them. They are coming. You prayed it. You prayed it and you meant it. Come, come. Come quickly. Come quickly. You prayed it and you meant it. Come from wherever you are. Come. 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 We will wait. We will wait. We will wait. We will wait. Your life is that important. We will wait. Your future is that important. We will.